Yes, in my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. Carolina in my mind. Oh my gosh, the whole time I painted this one, I had this, this song from James Taylor in my mind. Carolina in my mind, was in my mind. And uh, so anyway, this is a relatively easy one. It's a relatively straightforward um, landscape of a place in uh, North Carolina. It's called Cataloochee Valley. I, uh, I will show you right now the reference photo because I keep, keep forgetting to show you the reference photo. So here it is right now. There it is. And I got it off of uh, Google Maps. And the, uh, uh, the photographer is identified as Ariel. Aerial Threat. I'm, I'm assuming that that's not a real name, but Aerial Threat is, is who is credited with the photo that I used um, as a reference photo. And I didn't copy it exactly. I think I overdid the trees a little bit, but that's okay. It would look like this in some places, you know. Anyway, it was fun. I really enjoyed the chat with you today. You'll When you listen to the the dialogue I had with you, or the monologue. I guess it's just one with monologue, right? Um, anyway, I was chatting with you about some things I did in the past and how I met James Taylor and Carly Simon a long time ago. Real briefly. I mean, like one sentence. But anyway, it's a fond memory for me when I was, I guess, 19. I figured it out as I was talking. But this picture now how it's done how i did it how i approached it is what's i what i really really want you to see if if this is something you want to do um it gives a little bit of an autumn feel to it obviously the trees are all dormant for the winter or for the autumn there are no leaves on these trees but some of the distant trees you can see still have some foliage on them um and of course the mountains in the distance with that mist that sometimes forms in the valleys and uh, kind of kind of separates the mountains from the other mountains. And uh, just just a nice place. If I was to, I, or I already have somebody in mind for this particular card, but I'm not, you know what? <sighs> I don't know. I might give this card to somebody. But at the same time, I think I may have shared this with you, that our church is having an art auction at the end of November. And I have agreed, decided, Robert and I talked about this, to give all the cards that I haven't given away. I have a lot of them. All of these cards to the church, and then they will put them for auction. And I think, I think I have nothing to do with it, which is kind of good for me. I think the ladies who run the auction will put the cards together with other cards. I think they, Robin said that they put like five cards together. So when you, when you're bidding on my art, you're not bidding on one picture, you're bidding on a group of five and I wouldn't, what a task to try to figure out what goes with what, but I let them figure it out. Because, you know, I have landscapes like this one and I have, like yesterday I did a couple, of, uh, you know, a couple about the kiss from a scene in a movie and uh, I did a capybara, I did a tortoise, although the tortoise card has been given away. Um, just, just I've done a lot, you know, ships and lighthouses and, and yes, and seagulls, I hear you, crows, what do I hear outside? I hear some bird outside. Anyway, I want you to, uh, I want to thank you guys for writing. Also, I want to mention this, that I've had a few people ask Robin and me for our personal address, the physical address where we get mail. And I am very reluctant to give that out. So Robin is going to go to the post office and get a post office box, I think. I think that's what her plan is. So we have a public address that we can give you. And no offense, please. I, I've communicated with a lot of you, and I know you're harmless, but there's a lot of people out there who are not harmless. So just to 
protect us. We'll, we'll have a public address at the post office box. And she's going to do that this week, probably. And then we'll have a public address. How about that? We had one years ago. When Robert and I did the radio show, we ran into the same thing. People wanting to know our personal addresses. And so we had to have a, well, back in those days, we had the radio station address, which was a post office box. But now we're retired, so we kind of have to put our own little um, public address out there. All right, enough said. Let me show you how I did this guy here, this painting. And it was relatively easy. If you're if you're watching to watch this, you, um, you know, if it's just about the painting, then you you'd obviously will. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Just scrub through it. You'll see how I do the beginning, how I do the ending and um, figure it out. You'll figure it out, you're an artist. You're an artist and you don't gotta do it my way. No, 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 no. I cannot tell you no enough. Don't try to be anybody else but yourself. Just paint, just enjoy your creative soul, your creative gift, whether it's in art or music or dance or poetry or writing in prose, or cooking, or sculpting, or ceramics, or sewing, or quilting, crocheting. There's so many arts out there, so many arts. I'm sure I'm leaving out, like gardening is an art. Um, so many creative things that people can do to make the world just a little bit better because God knows there's a lot of people making the world hard to live in. So let's do what we can to make it easier to live in, okay? All right, let me show you how I did this right now. Well, good morning. Thank you for tuning in or signing on or however, whatever the terms are that apply to today's world. I think the, I think today will be a, a straightforward landscape. Make it a lot easier. I'm still, oh gosh, I'm still shying away from doing a Christmas card every single day. I know I should be doing one every day, but I've got Carolina on my mind today. <laughs> As James Taylor's song says, in my mind, I'm going to Carolina. So, and in fact, in my plans, I'm going to Tennessee, which I've not spent much time in Tennessee, but it's pretty close to Carolina. We're going to um, Gatlinburg, I think I, shared that with you in another video. I found this beautiful picture of a place in Tennessee called Cataloochee Valley. So that's what I'm using as a reference photo. And I do have it. And um, it is from a photographer. Well, I don't know if that's a real name or not. It says Aerial Threat. You think that's a real name? Anyway, <laughs> I got it from Google Maps. So I'm going to try my best to create a really pretty picture of this place. Just a real, real bright blue and sky. And we don't need clouds in this one. Just need some blue, beautiful blue sky. We have some beautiful blue skies here in Central Florida too. Sometimes, you know, I grew up in New York. I grew up on Long Island, New York, near New York City. So I think because when you live near an urban area like that, you have a lot of hazy days that are probably more pollution caused than they are natural. Um, I don't know. That's just my guess. But yes, here in Florida, we have some blue skies and and probably most of the world. 
it's probably the urban areas that, that get left out of that a lot. You know, as young people, we love the cities. We love going into the city. I always did. Don't ask me why. And I'll be honest with you, there's sometimes still when I long to be in that urban environment. And, and I, you know what? It doesn't even make sense. Why would I want to be there? It's noisy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because it's active. Maybe that's what it is. But the truth is, I really do love being out in the, in the rural parts of the world. Maybe I didn't grow up in a rural part of the world, but I love being in a rural part of the world. In my mind, I'm gone to Carolina is the song I want to use today. The song from James Taylor. I don't, I don't know him personally. I met him actually one time, sort of. I actually met Carly Simon, his wife at that time. Um, James Taylor was doing a concert at the Nassau Coliseum and I worked there. And when you work at the Coliseum, at least back, back in those days, you would be assigned. You would be assigned a place, and and basically my job was to to clean up. So if somebody spilled soda or worse, then then you know you you get a, a message. You have to go to aisle four or whatever and clean up. So. Um, and then after the concert, you had to clean up all the all the litter and the popcorn and everything that was on the floor. And before the concert, you had to, you know, set up chairs and move things around. And and if there was a, a basketball game, you had to help uh, with the flooring. They put down flooring for the basketball court. And uh, so that was my job. Anyway, so the concert was a James Taylor concert. It was in the 1970s, I'm pretty sure. Had to be, yeah had to be more like 75, 74. And James Taylor and Carly Simon, they were a big deal back in those days. I don't know if you were alive back then, but you, you, if you were, you remember that. They were a big deal. They were everywhere. And I loved their music. I loved James Taylor's music. I loved Carly Simon's music. And I was, uh, that particular day, I was uh, stationed near the stage, um, backstage actually, which is even better than near the stage. And that was my area, which, you know, they would have spills too. They would have a, a reason to go clean up. <laughs> and that was my job. My job was to clean up and, and to be there just to do maintenance stuff during the concert. And then after, before and after the concert, just basic maintenance, you know, like a maintenance man does a, a grunt I'd be working with a broom. <laughs> the broom was my tool, and uh, that was that was pretty much what I did. Well, anyway, 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 let me tell you how I, I had a a brush with with both of them, James Taylor and Carly Simon, and Peter Asher, by the way, who was their I'm going to say producer at that time. Maybe he was also their road manager. I'm not really sure. But anyway, so I was stationed there, and I was off the stage. When you're looking at the stage on the left side, is that called stage left? Well, that's stage right, right? Because right and left is from the actor's point of view, or the performer's point of view. I don't know. Um, anyway, if you're looking at the stage from the audience, it was on the left. I was, I was over there and James Taylor came out and he had this long flowing jacket like like, um, like what do I want to say not denim like like a corduroy jacket does that make sense I think so I think that's what he had and it, he was like a spirit yeah I was in awe I was starstruck I'll be honest with you I was starstruck. So anyway, then he started performing, and while he's performing, there's not a whole lot that the maintenance people do, except, like I say, 
if you get a call to go clean up somebody's mess. And James Taylor's concert was was pretty mild. He wasn't like one of those wild guys. So his audiences were pretty pretty mild. You know, he didn't have like, you know, people f vomiting. I hate to say that word in the, in the video here, but that's the truth. He didn't have that kind of an audience. He had a, a pretty mild audience, so there wasn't a whole lot to do. So I was able to stand there and, and watch him sing. And standing next to me, all of a sudden I noticed Carly Simon. Oh my gosh. And she was beautiful. Oh my goodness. There was a moment there where I was thinking, boy, I wish he wasn't married to her. <laughs> she was just a beautiful, beautiful lady. And I said one thing to her. I said, are you going to sing with him tonight? And she said, I don't think so. And then we both continued to watch James Taylor. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm standing next to Carly Simon. Well, she did end up singing with him because that was at the time when they did that song Mockingbird. And she got up there and sang with him. And it was, for me as a young man, I was probably, oh, let's say, I might have only been 19, yeah, 19 or 20. Anyways, yeah, I was a really young guy, wow, when you think of how old you were in certain years. So anyway, hold on, I'm going to get some coffee, you don't mind if I talk to you. I gotta let that dry anyway. Um, so that was my, my brush with with them, with Carly Simon and James Taylor. I've always admired both of their songwriting. I, I loved the creative part of them. I know the starstruck part of me liked the celebrity, but you know, I'm a, obviously at the age of almost 70 now, I'm way past that. But I still like their creative souls, their creative spirits. You know, the things that they did. I, I can hear so much influence in, in today's songwriters that seem to stem from the work that they did. Anyway, and as, you know, as a fan from the past, I still hear their songs in my mind. So, okay, I want to read the words for Carolina in my mind. You know, I've got to let this dry because right now it's pretty wet right there and I don't want it to be that wet so I'll just let it dry and this is um, from James Taylor obviously and it's called Carolina in my mind and you know I don't really know if it's not about a girl it might be um, but I always took it to mean North Carolina or South Carolina so here's what the words say in my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Now can't you just feel the moonshine? And ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? Yes, I'm gone to Carolina in my mind. Karen, she's a silver sun. You best walk her away and watch it shine. Watch her, watch the morning come. A silver tear appearing. Now I'm crying, ain't I? I'm gone to Carolina. In my mind, there ain't no doubt in no one's mind that love's the finest thing around. Whisper something soft and kind. And hey, babe, the sky's on fire. I'm dying, ain't I? I'm gone to Carolina in my mind. In my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Now can't you just feel the moonshine? And ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? Yes, I'm gone to Carolina in my mind. Dark and silent late last night, I think I might have heard the highway call. 
geese in flight, and dogs that bite, and signs that might be omens say I'm going, going, gone to Carolina in my mind. Now, with a holy host of others standing round me, no, no, I'm still on the dark side of the moon, and it looks like it goes on like this forever. You must forgive me if I'm up and gone to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? And ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? Yes, I'm gone to Carolina in my mind. In my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. Can't you just see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? And ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? Yes, I'm gone to Carolina in my mind. Thank you, James Taylor, for that song, for so many years of great music. Such an inspiration. Such a gentle, gentle singer and songwriter standing tall like Abraham Lincoln, like a true statesman. All right, let's put these mountains in here. Um, let's see what color I want for the mountains. Do this darker blue. This darker blue for the distant mountains. And I see it's still a little wet. Oh, that's purple. I want a darker blue. Wait, 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 let me get blue. Oh, there's a darker blue, I guess. There's a blue. Um, yeah, it's still a little bit wet, and that's good. That's good when you're doing distant mountains. You know, just get it a little bit. There we go. Get it a little bit hazy that way. Drag this across. Just create a little bit of a distant rolling hills look. Now we can always put some stuff closer. So let's get something a little closer. A little greener. And that'll be right here. be a lot darker too. Let's add some darkness to it. I want to make sure I leave a lot of light there. I want to really work that orange in there. Let's just put some some deep greens in there now. some of that blue later on. I can put some water on it and bring it down. Let's get some of these in here. These dark greens. As 
So in my other stories from the Nassau Coliseum, um, I did have other sort of kind of brushes with some of the, the artists at the, of those days and some of the athletes too, but I wasn't much into sports, so I don't remember the names of the athletes. My friends all were, they loved sports. And so they knew all these guys, the hockey players, the basketball players. I believe that's pretty much who we had at the Nassau Coliseum with hockey and basketball. Um, but I loved the concerts. I met the guys from the group Styx. I met the guys from the group Earth, Wind and Fire. I met um, the guys from the group America. Do you remember America? Mm, who else did I meet? I met some un unknown, lesser known ones like Handy Moon, Grinder Switch, Rainbow. Some of those bands that were sort of popular at that time. I met the Good Rats. Does anybody remember the Good Rats? The Good Rats was a, was a Long Island band. I, I never met Billy Joel, but I was 10 feet from him. <laughs> yeah, Billy Joel's the epitome of Long Island um, singers and songwriters. I never met Harry Chapin. I believe he passed away before I started working there. Um, who else? Mm, I'm drawing a blank now. And then there were some that I heard, because if you're stationed far enough away from the stage, you don't see them, you only hear them. That's just the way it was. It's a great time in my life to be not even 20 years old and and have a job like that. I know it's not a great job because you're a maintenance worker and you're, you're cleaning up after people. You're not a supervisor, you're just a grunt. I know. But you know what? I have some great memories from that. I was always an artist though. I was always drawing. You know what I remember? Oh, I remember, uh, I never met John Denver, but I worked at the Nassau Coliseum when he played. I was in a place where you couldn't see him. You could hear him. I know it sounds weird. Sometimes they wouldn't even, like, if your shift started after the concert, you would just hear them outside. You'd be waiting outside, and you would hear them. Well, John Denver was one of them. And um, John Denver did a concert... Oh, Eric Clapton, too. I didn't meet him either, but I was in the same room as him. Um, well, put it this way, I was in the same corridor as him. But he was behind a closed door, so I didn't see him. Uh, he was tuning his guitar. I know, that's a great story, right? It sounds like I'm making it up, but I'm fine. I have no reason to make that up. But let me tell you about John Denver and what that has to do with art. John Denver played the Nassau Coliseum and I cleaned up. And you know one of the areas that I cleaned up was the, the dressing room. John Denver, the you know, the little room that John Denver used to, to tune his guitar and to just wait for the concert and to go after the concert and to get changed and whatever. I that was my station that night. And so, um, I, I went in there after, and I didn't, never saw him, I never saw anybody on his concert um, that I was recognizable, anyway. I saw uh, his garbage. I know this sounds weird, I saw John Denver's garbage. Okay, and in his garbage pail, are you ready for this? In his garbage pail was artwork. I mean artwork. Some brilliantly done pictures of him done by his fans. Let me repeat where I saw it in his garbage pail. 
and all I could think of as an artist and a fan of music. And I, I don't know, he's, I know he's passed away, but I, I hope that performers realize, I don't know, you're throwing away stuff that is so special to somebody. Somebody took the time to paint a picture, paint a portrait. Somebody loved him enough to do a painting of him. And there was that painting in the garbage. And that person never knew. You know, that person who made that painting never knew that John Denver threw it away. Or somebody threw it away. I don't know. I don't know who, but he didn't have it. It was in the garbage. And I didn't save it. My job was to empty the garbage, put it where it belonged. But I just thought, wow, somebody went through all that trouble to paint a picture of him, and he threw it away. So what should he have done with it? Was there was there that much? Was there that much garbage in? in every performer's life, in every performer's performance, was there that much that you couldn't, you couldn't bring it, have somebody store it away? You couldn't have it one day in a, a museum somewhere? See, that's what I always wondered, why, why did you throw it away? Did you even look at it? Did somebody else take it and, and not even show it to you? Is that possible? You know, it's just, anyway, so, appreciate the art that you see. How many times have I gone to the, to the garbage dump and see artwork in the garbage? You have to wonder why. I mean, was it really that bad? Anyway, that's that story. I don't know if I have very many stories from the Coliseum. I'm drawing a blank now. Okay, I know this sounds, this looks like a mess right here, but trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm building it to do something. I'm building it up. I'm trying my best to build it up. I just want some oranges in there to give the sense of of autumn or beginning autumn. Let me get some green in there. Some type of light here. Let's get a clean brush and pull some of those blues down. Now that it's dry, let's fuzz them up a little bit. Let's give that early morning Smoky Mountain smokiness to that blue. Just let the watercolor do what watercolor does. I wonder how much art gets thrown away that I do. I send my cards to people I don't even know. It's possible. You know, it's one of the reasons why when people ask me about pricing art, I, I know an artist in, in my town here, and I saw her art for sale, and I told her she was charging too little. You have to charge more. And she didn't think that was right to charge more. I said, well, if you charge more, somebody will take care of it. You know, if they really want it, they'll take care of it. And guess what? If they don't really want it, 
and maybe they're buying it as a gift for somebody and sometimes you know what happens with gifts they get regifted I know I know every every artist has always had an argument with me about my theory on pricing a lot of people don't agree with me but I do think you should price your art price it, price it high. You don't have to settle for that. You can give it away, in fact. You don't have to even get any money for it. But put a high price on it. Make it, make it possible for somebody to own it only if they are willing to sacrifice the one thing that people seem to hold on to as much as life itself which is money. Money fools us. Money makes us believe that wasting our time is justified if there's a capital gain. It's just my philosophy. But at the same time, you can use that. You can use that for your, to protect your art of course, to provide for yourself and your family. All right, look at all this mess here. Look at this mess I'm making here. Just a mess. Just a mess of orange and green and blue. I add a little bit more darkness here. Just kind of create some texture here. Let's see where it goes. In my mind I'm gone to Carolina. Can't you see the sunshine? Can't you just feel the moonshine? And ain't it just like a friend of mine? Hit me from behind. I wonder what he meant by that. Ain't it just like a friend of mine to hit me from behind? What does that mean? That's not a friend. Somebody hits you from behind, unless it's a like a love tap or something. James Taylor, what did you mean by that? I wonder if I'll ever meet him again. I like him now. As an older guy, I liked him as a younger guy back then, but he was a little bit on the the druggy side, you know what I mean? <laughs> and now he seems like a statesman. I saw him once, um, I didn't see him in person, but on a video. I saw him performing with, um, oh, what's her name? Taylor. Taylor Swift. Got his name. She has his first, her first name is his last name. I wonder if that's a coincidence. I wonder if there's a story there. I think I heard there was a story there. Hmm. I'm drawing a blank, but I'm sort of kind of remembering something like that. Trying to get some of these orange tones to be a little bit deeper orange. You'll see what I'm doing. In just a second, you'll see this all start to come alive. I know you already know because you've seen the intro. But this is the moment of truth. Get some yellows in there. Some of these fall colors in there. Yellows and oranges. I'm looking forward to going to Gatlinburg in October. I bet you the colors are going to be beautiful.
I plan to do some painting while I'm up there. I hope I can do some Papa Paints videos while I'm up there. Alright, I'm just going to get some more yellow in there. Make this brighter. You can't really make watercolor brighter with watercolor. Well, I take that back. Look, it's working. So I take that back. I just said something and then I contradicted it already. So I'll just, just make some of these marks here. of this mountain. You probably can't even tell it's an edge of a mountain right now. Probably can't tell. But to make it look like an edge of a mountain, I have to add some more darkness right here. And right here. So you have like a hill here that goes deeper into there. Is this starting to make sense? Is the picture starting to come together? Karen, she's a silver sun. I wonder what that means. I guess she's a bright light. Whoever Karen was. And James Taylor was a young man when he wrote that one, right? He had an interesting story too. Getting his start with the Beatles. Isn't that... I mean, it's like, what? James Taylor got his start with the Beatles. And they made an album with him. Some One of them produced his album, I think. And as much as I love the Beatles, I, I preferred James Taylor the, a different way. The way they produced him was very thick and very orchestrated and, you know, a lot of production. I kind of like him better with just his guitar. Okay, now I think we've got something that looks sort of kind of like what I want. But we got lots of light spaces on there, and that's what we want, lots of light spaces. So it's time to add the stuff that we've been waiting for, the dark lines that go all the way to the top of the picture, all the way to the top. Yes, I know, I'm ruining the painting. No, I'm not. I'm making the painting what it was meant to be all along. Which was a painting of a landscape in Cataloochee Valley in Haywood County, North Carolina. Because in my mind, that's where I'm going. In my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. I'm going to put a little fence over here, too. Right there. Let's get that fence in there. Just a little bit of a fence. Here we go. How about that, huh? A little bit of a fence. We'll put a tree right here. It goes all the way up to the top. All the way up. 
onto the other side of the card. Yes. And the tree on the other side of the fence. We'll have lots of branches on these trees eventually. The whole idea is to create lots of branches. Lots of trees. All just coming up right in the foreground. Branches just everywhere. Lots and lots of branches. Because in my mind, I'm gone to Carolina. on here. Some thicker ones. I like to start with thin and then thicken up the ones that seem like they should be thicker. Because you can't thin them down. If you can't do it the opposite way. Just a lot of trees in this picture. A lot of big trees. A lot of tall trees, a lot of bent trees, a lot of straight trees. Trees that defy gravity. Trees that defy any artistic theories. This is how you draw a tree. Can you still see it? I've put my hand in the way a lot. So we want lots and lots of trees. closer you get to the top of the card, the farther away you pull the brush. Lots of branches reaching for the sky. Yes. 
So if you were to paint this picture in plain air, and you had people gathering around you to watch you as you painted it, <laughs> they wouldn't even have thought it was much of a painting until this point here. Where all of a sudden they say, oh, oh, I see it now. I see what you were doing. You were preparing for all of this. All along. It's kind of like our lives. Our lives are a series of preparing. Preparing for this and preparing for that. You don't even know what you're preparing for sometimes. And then later on, you say, well, I'm glad that happened to me because that helped me prepare for this. Isn't that amazing? Now, don't tell me that that happens by accident. I think that's God working in our lives, preparing us for things, getting us prepared, make sometimes our mistakes are the best things that happen to us. Because they teach us not to do that again. Even in art, you make a mistake. You say, well, I'm not going to do that again. Of course, with art, I do a lot of the same mistakes over and over again. <laughs> I really do. I make the same mistake over and over again. It's like the dog in the video that tries to walk through the through the gate with a with a log in his mouth. I love those videos because they're funny, but the dog is like us. Or it's like the the fly in the back window of a car. You know the fly just insists on going out through that back window. The fly can see the outdoors, but he can't get through that glass. He tries and he tries and he tries. He just can't get through it. And if you open up the side window and try to give him a way out, he still doesn't see it. He still doesn't see the way out. Even though there's a window just a few feet away, and that's the way it is with us, too. You ever, you ever think that? I'm like a fly in the window. I'm being stubborn. I'm not making sense. I'm not looking around and seeing the open windows. Instead, I'm insisting on going out this window. Yeah. We do that a lot to ourselves. I've done it a lot to myself the course of my life I've been stubborn and, and it's just not paying attention to what really should be best. How many times did my father tell me something and I just thought, no, I know better. I am not just saying that because I'm old now. Well, I might be saying it because I'm old, but I'm not saying it because like I'm a dad and I did the same thing with my son. In fact, I actually think my son was wiser in his choices than I was in mine. I do think so. He's a smart guy. But I made a lot of dumb choices. I don't mean harmful choices. I just mean like some things like, I don't know. I pursued music for, for so long, and music just went nowhere for me. And then when I started doing art, a lot of things opened up for me. I was like, well, wait a minute. I had this ability all along. Why was I struggling so hard with something when I had something else? You know? I don't know why we do that. You'll have to ask a psychiatrist. <laughs> I could, I could speculate. I could speculate that's probably something superficial. It's 
probably something you want to seem greater than you are. You want to see, you, you just forget that God is really the one in everything. In everything. Even painting a beautiful landscape. I didn't create this landscape, God did. I'm just trying to make a picture of it. It's like, it's like painting a picture of your favorite celebrity. Like John Denver. Or James Taylor. But, but you know what? God's not going to throw it away. No, I don't think so. I think this is a homage to the Creator. Homage to the Creator. Oh, there's a word, there's an expression. I never I think I made something up right there. All right, I think we're done. Okay, you know what I need? Wait a minute. No, I'm not done. I need to put some more branches here in the foreground. Trees don't only have branches at the top. They've got branches all over the place. So let's put some down here. Let's put some down here. Make some over here. And then you can sort of see the autumn colors. Now I just want to take this water and smear the background, I mean the back of the car, so that it has that watercolor back to the card. Not the background to the picture, just the back of the card. Smear it around. There we go. It's actually picking up paper. <laughs> that's not good. That's a little bit too much water, isn't it? That's all right. It'll work out. I'm going to give all of these cards to the church. This is my dryer. It's too hot. It should be a regular hair dryer, but this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to turn off the camera so you don't have to listen to it, and I'll be right back. Okay. Now let's fold it. Let's hope it looks the way we want it to look. I think it does. I think I may have overdone the trees a little bit, but that's okay. That might be how it looks in Catalucci Valley in Haywood County, North Carolina. Well, there we go. In my mind, I've been to Carolina. All right, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.